Remember this? Today it's called Melinda's. They sell women's clothing and run a fitness center in the back. 40 years ago it was called Ernie's. Today it would probably be called Ernesto's. And they would sell cappuccinos and chai lattes. Maybe some quiche. Back then it was a greasy burger and fries for 75 cents, 10 cents for a Coke, and a punch in the head was free if you weren't careful. Before it was Ernie's, it was the Husky Grill Pool Hall, run by Ricky Charbonneau. Good guy. At that time, you had to be 18 to go in, and girls of any age were not allowed, or wanted. Ricky was a smart guy, and knew that his clientele had to learn to play pool. So he would let us younger guys in to learn the game. If the cops walked in, we went out the back door. Everyone knew, nobody cared, unless some parent made a stink. This could be a scary place for a 14 or 15 year old kid. This was what you might call shark infested waters. The older guys were playing for money and any distractions were not welcome. I can still remember Leo McNeil hoisting Hummy Fine over his head and threatening to throw him out the door. There's Ricky now. If there was one area that our group could improve on over the last generation, it was nicknames. Butch, Snake, and Hummy just didn't cut it anymore. We had Fuzzy, Sleether, Quills, Aldine, T-Bone, Squawk, Winchkey, Custiadata, Ama, Padu, Peachhead, Hippo Creep and Leapin', Dent, Gutsy, Shrissel T. Goblin, Sudsy, Sharbuski, and Eleni amongst us. We had a pterodactyl, a platypus, a tuna. We had a ziz dog, scrap dog, and a mad dog. And we even had puke dogs. Christ, you had to categorize nicknames under subspecies. My personal favorite, though, was damsel babe. If you were a damsel babe, you were something. Don't know what, but you were something. Besides pool, we had these pinball machines. These were the best. They were Las Vegas gambling style machines in arm prior of all places not legal and out in the open. The principle was simple. Win 20 games or more, and there was a payout. You could even increase your odds by adding more nickels, just like Vegas. The house always won, but it was one more thing that brought players in. We had a pretty good thing going on back then. Then something happened that changed pool rooms and the Husky Grill. In 1970, they removed the age restriction for entering pool halls and Women were no longer barred from entering. With flower power and full swing, all the conditions were perfect for someone like Ernie to move in. Then, a year later, they dropped the drinking age to 18. This is about the dumbest bill any politician ever introduced. So get this, to combat marijuana abuse, the powers that be thought that by dropping the drinking age, we would stop smoking pot and take up drinking. Well, we took up drinking, just didn't stop smoking. So now that we were stoned and drunk, we just needed something to keep us awake. That's when a new menu item appeared on Ernie's menu. Spoon in a glass of water, 10 cents. Now that we had this perfect cocktail, courtesy of our provincial government, we just needed somewhere to really enjoy it. What better way to enjoy better living through modern chemistry than behind three or four thousand pounds of Detroit steel? Nobody saw this one coming. He started with Kevin McMillan and Francis Curry on the River Road, then Terry Vial on a 750 Norton on the White Lake Road. It didn't stop. Ab Maneri, Moon Mullins, Dwight Hedrick, Linton Hicks, and again the list went on. Others left us for different reasons, but the earnings crowd mortality rate was very high. Back at Ernie's, things were changing. You could acquire things at Ernie's, even alcohol. But Ernie lost sight of something. This became this, and this became this, and this became this, etc. He never figured out that he owned a pool hall first, and then a place to hang out. He had it backwards. He thought that people came here to eat or listen to music, and then play pool for fun. There was a core of us that really liked the game. 
and it was a cross-section of the entire group. Once the pool tables disappeared, that group gravitated to the other billiard academy in town, or as it was affectionately known, Marineland. The shooters there literally couldn't hit the broadside of a barn door. Anyway, that and the town leader's overwhelming desire to be rid of Ernest eventually brought it to a close. Ernie's is closed now for 40 years, but for some reason it still seems to define a large group of us. By the way, his full name, Ernie Preston.